Welcome back gang, it's Delta here from DeltaIsGaming.com and in this video we're going to talk about the T3 Dragonite tank build for the Elder Scrolls Online Dark Brotherhood. Made a couple modifications to it in terms of gear and skills, but specifically I went and tanked Vetrum, Sanctum, Ophidia, and Vet Ma to make sure that it could handle all the latest content in the game, specifically trials based. So if you're looking for a trials based a DK tank that can do dungeons as well, this is your vid. Who doesn't like three red balls floating around their character? Well, I'll tell you what, nobody, because it's awesome. In the T3 build, we changed some things with gear, skill, and CP. I'm going to show you. Yeah, so the orbs, we're going to talk about the gear thing real quick. Now, basically, I'm still using the Tava's uh, setup, and that was with the sturdy trait. So I had to recraft here on uh, this new patch, so I burned through a lot of temporaries. Taking donations. Still want to provide your group with some awesome ultimate regeneration using Warhorn. So with this setup, I can usually average an aggressive Warhorn once every 40 to 45 seconds if I'm keeping all my buffs up. I, I just think it's an absolute must have. Now you notice the problem with the Tava's tank here and, and heavy armor is that the pieces don't come in any mitigation compared to footmen's or something like that. So you're going to suffer from mitigation issues if you don't counteract it in a couple different ways. So I went with Tava's on a couple pieces of my uh, body, three, and then foot, uh, Blood spawn here, sturdy as well, and I, I enchanted it magic. I'm going to get to why that in a little bit, uh, but this gives me that extra boost of physical resistance I need to get the hard cap. The problem is it has a cooldown, so you're not going to have your hard cap CP unless you spec your CP differently um, at that 32, 33k range. So when I buff here, we we'll go back and look at this. I'm at 29k spell resistance, that's real good. Physical resistance, that's a bit low. Now, the hardest boss to tank, or the hardest hitting boss, I should say, in the game is really the Mana Quora. Now, I've done it with this build, no problem, uh, but you're really dependent on your healer. So you may have to change around your five piece depending on your specific setup to get that more uh, mitigation, or you can swap your Munda Stone depending on your race. So five piece with that, two piece Blood Spawn, Ultimate Regeneration, and then a five piece Ebon, Ebon set. So the Ebon Armory set comes from Normal Maw. Uh, you can get some of the Gold Jewelry, I think, from the last boss and Vet. I don't know for sure, but you can get Purple now, which is really easy to get. So adds a ton of health. Now, the reason I'm using this is because I have been using Bahara's Curse right here, and that's for like normally just clearing trash, uh, doing group dungeons and stuff like that. But for harder, higher end content, you really need to provide something to the group. And uh, almost 1,100 health really helps those ultra glass cannon DPS survive during trash phase. So it gives me a lot of health, which allows me to put points into other stats. You can see here I'm at 24k stamina and uh, 18,000 magic. I have decent magic recovery and heavy armor. All heavy. I went with all heavy because I was feeling way too squishy uh, with 5-2 setup. So all heavy. I don't need more stats with Undaunted. I'd rather just have more armor and resistance. Now, uh, I went with one recovery and two reduced cost. You probably want to go two recovery and one reduced cost, but I uh, ended up crafting the wrong glyph twice. Derp. But another really key thing to do with your build here is this weapon enchant on an infused sword. So this is going to be your main taunt bar, and, and this really helps out the DPS of the group. Reduces the target's uh, spell and physical resistance by 1946. So if someone else has a crusher enchant, it won't, it won't stack, but that allows DPS on your team, if you're the consistent tank, to free up their enchant. So maybe fire, maybe poison, um, weapon damage, of course, uh, spell damage, but something else besides that. So our main taunt bar, you can see that this will apply that debuff without just swinging your sword. The only problem is it lasts for five seconds. So you're going to have to constantly bar swap and, and apply this buff and or light attack in between. When in doubt, hold block. If you're struggling as a tank, I see tanks get lifted all the time to wrecking blows and just insta die to heavy attacks. You should be holding block. Once you know the mechanics of fights and stuff, then you can kind of drop your block here and there, swing your attack, light attack. But really, there's no there's no downside to holding block, especially if your your group is consistent and you have the appropriate buffs and debuffs going. You're gonna have stamina coming back to you at all times, so don't worry about that. On the back bar, I went with decisive. 
So I really like this trait. Now, it's a little controversial. I know people don't think it's that good, but it, it can add up. And so what I do here on my bar setups, so I have Ransack as my taunt. I'm going to tell you why I switched morphs. But right here, I have Igneous Shields on my back bar with the Decisive trait. So what I do is every six seconds or so, I go back to my back bar and I'm getting stamina back, but really I'm getting ultimate. And so once I gain that extra ultimate, boom. This is proccing that extra ultimate on my sword and board bar, which may proc more ultimate for me. So that's why I have that on the back bar. Uh, the other, the other uh, enchant here doesn't really need to apply. You could even use some poison, like minor, minor vulnerability or something like that. But if you do need extra stamina, I put it on there. So I just swing here, light, light attack here and there to get some more stamina back. I'm an orc. And so on my gear enchants, I went 64 stamina. Now, depending on your specific race, you really should be able to do some damage in a pinch. Because some of these dungeons, like Vet Ma, that, re that will require two tanks the majority of the time. Um, Sanctum Ophidia Veteran Mode doesn't. Now, you can run it with two tanks, and that's what we do, because there's the ads that are really troublesome. Where you can pretty much be a DPS and just have chain things once in a while. So it's important that if you switch to DPS gear that you have a good consistent setup. So what I did is spec all my stuff into magic pretty much with one stamina enchant. And so that way I still have a decent pool of magic, got a, a decent pool of health and a lot of stamina. I really think stamina needs to be your primary objective. The reason why is spear shards gives you stamina back based on your amount. So 25%. So if you have 10,000 stamina, 25% of 10,000 stamina, math time it's not very much 25 percent of 24k that's a lot so that's why i go more into the max stamina uh specifically that way okay so skills let me talk to you about what i changed here now i have let me show you you guys see this coming up lamia boss so test guard stalwart guard ma dps guard tank i have a million different setups so that i use uh, lamia boss is the thing in the back the back room at orza and it's a really hard fight i'll explain a little bit what i switch out so uh these two things here absorb magic and volatile armor now volatile armor is almost a must have but in trash pulls or if i'm off tanking i drop that i usually don't need the extra physical resistance and it frees up an ability here to guard someone usually i'm going to guard a melee dps that's squishy or dying a lot or uh, a magic build that needs the extra critical strike damage so you're going to guard the squishy person that person running around with 16k eating popcorn getting thrown up you need to guard them prevent them to die you can swap guard as well so don't just guard one target and think that's all i'm going to sit on them and just never do anything you need to be active with your guard is your healer in trouble click it point at your healer click it again it can save wipes for your group plus that extra damage uh, will actually proc your stuff way more often so remember that it's based on tava's is based on dodging so the more times we take damage the more chances this is to proc with our dodge up uh same thing with blood spawn more times you take damage more times it can proc our, our blood spawn so i drop these two abilities fall to armor and absorb magic it's gonna make me a lot squishier but that's like i said if i'm doing off tanking or i just need to get protect someone specifically relenting chains gotta have it i love it now in very specific fights there is nothing to chain um but most of the time it's it's prudent to have this on here i also use propelling shield and i would recommend leveling this up completely it's a pain in the butt to level up it's awesome you need to look at this but the second boss in vet ma will require you to do some uh, long range taunting so it's useful it's also useful to have a magic dump in the final boss of vet sanctum ophidia and ransack it seems like an odd choice because i've i've boasted about you know taking uh, the other morph here for physical and spell resistance, but right now there's a problem in most trial groups Someone is going to be running uh, This morph right here elemental drain So it gives you major breach, which is the same thing the other morph of our taunt does the problem with it is when you reapply your taunt it strips elemental drains magic uh, effect because every time you apply some new buff, like let's say you have a, a potion up and you apply a major brutality another way, like rally, it re it redoes the effect and sometimes strips it away. Now we've told Zoss about this. I've tested it. It's true. 
Um, so it's a big deal if you get if you drop elemental drain from your trials group. So your healers will notice this. So that's why I went with ransack. Plus, I'm pretty low on uh, armor anyways, the way it is. So I might as well use it and get that minor resolve for 12 seconds. Remember that this taunt, it's hard to over taunt now. So I, I use a little more actively on targets, uh, specifically applying that major crusher enchant so uh, i wouldn't go haywire and just spam this thing but you can do it a little more frequently main thing is keep that block up if you're having trouble next up is choking talons we've used it bread and butter minor maim for everything in the area for seven seconds and remember that it applies minor maim um, even if it doesn't like necessarily talons the guy in place so if you're out of stamina and you're getting the crap beat out of you you can apply minor main to some other targets using choking talons so just keep that in mind the synergy that this provides is amazing and the damage is fantastic so you i really think you need choking talons now in fights where there's absolutely zero aoe which is pretty much none you can swap this out so i just pretty much always leave it on my bar Absorb Magic, um, I switched this morph as well. So I went with Defensive Stance, Defensive Posture for a very, very, very long time. Now I still like that skill, but the thing about it is it's somewhat counterproductive when we're doing pulls and the mob gets stunned because chains won't bring him to me. And uh, I'm not going to go to them either, but I'll just sit there and do nothing. So I really like this extra healing it provides and the fact that it's reliable with my chains. I'm not going to be able to uh, down some mob caster and not be able to pull them. Next up, Heroic Slash. This is going to give you uh, Minor Maim for 12 seconds, uh, Major Heroism as well, and that will generate ultimate when you swap your back bar. So I, I do like that. I, the reason I put on my front bar is because I do a heal combo with Igneous Shields Resolving Vigor, um, so that way I don't have to swap. But when in doubt, this thing needs to be applied on the boss. Again, it needs to be applied on the boss. Because sometimes the boss's effects, like you know, ground crap poison or lightning or, or something like that, fire, sometimes it can be debuffed through this ability, not just the physical attacks. So make sure that you're keeping this up on the boss priority. If you can't do this because you run out of stamina, do choking talons. Do something. Debuff the boss. It's not literally just tank there and sit there and take damage. You need to be active in debuffing. That's a big part of it. Next up, Aggressive Warhorn, Alliance War. You need to take this morph, not the other one. It's critical. So you and your allies gain major force uh, for... 9.5 seconds and the huge amount of stats it's just the bread and butter of trials dps right now having about four people run it um popping it once every 10 seconds if possible and at least every 30 seconds if possible having a nice solid ro warhorn rotation the extra max stats along with my ebony you're looking at giving someone a whole lot more health so it's going to prevent a lot of deaths like i said if you're optimized fully with this build using a lot of your buffs and debuffs you can get this every 40 45 seconds but it's going to be an active tanking role you're not going to sit there and just hold block so if you're looking at getting this up every four or 45 seconds you're going to have to cast this about four times you're going to have to cast igneous shields a crap ton because remember you can get ultimate back here in the earth and heart ability every six seconds so you're going to need to be very very active debuffing healing yourself providing utility if you want to get those warhorns off reliably back bar uh, igneous shield now i swapped out uh this and the reason why in my stam dps build i'm going to use molten armaments and then most uh dps healers uh, anyone are going to be running uh their own sp uh, spell power or weapon power potions anyway since medicinal use is reliable now and the extra advantage that igneous shields give is just fantastic it's just a juggernaut major mending increasing your healing done and it provides a nice little shield now the shield can be uh, raised with the bastion that's very valuable but the thing i like about it is you can spam this with the major mending and along with vigor and use some really nice healing so if we look at this 2.4k non-crit uh, times two, so it doesn't seem like a lot, but once that major mending goes off, you can see it goes down. Now imagine doing this, it's it's like a weak healing springs. So the tank, my tank roll here, if I'm doing nothing else and I got all my debuffs and buffs out, I'll do an igneous and there. Now remember, major mending lasts about six, seven seconds, 3.5k on a crit, and then you can get back your resources uh, and ultimate every six seconds. 
with our Earth and Heart passive. So a lot of times I will do that combo every six seconds regardless of everyone's at full health. And I've gotten up to 20,000 healing per second just doing that combo because everyone was stacked together. So you need to have magic, but this gives magic, uh, takes magic, gives you back stamina, which I put right into our Resolving Vigor, giving health back and a lot of utility. Um, a mandatory skill you have to have is Shuffle. Now, you can take the other morph, but sometimes it's useful to have Shuffle to get rid of the snares and immob uh, mobilizations back in the, the back room for the Orza fight. So I really like this. We're not using any medium armor, so it's not going to increase the duration per se, but the morph uh, allowing us to remove those snares is really, really nice. Now, another thing that not a lot of people understand is that Inner Rage, the synergy that this provides... Uh, DPS wise is incredible. Uh, there's some people that have gotten 100,000 DPS hitting this energy once. So I really, really like Inner Rage and you need a ranged taunt nowadays. So you got to have this. I would take the extra synergy chance because it adds up to a lot of DPS. Synergies are the way to go in this game. Free DPS to give you back resources. Why not use it? So I really like that skill nowadays. We talked about Volatile Armor. Cost Magic gives you that physical resistance, though I do swap it out for Guard, Vigor, and then I go back with Magma Shell. Uh, in an oh crap situation, let's say we're, we're about to wipe and no one has a Nova and the boss is doing a lot of damage. It will give us a nice little shield, but more importantly, I can res and basically not die. So what I do with this is I hit a Magma Shell, I go to my potions here, and I hit an uh, immunity potion. So immune to disabling effects. So what's that going to do? If someone throws some poopy grenade at me or whatever, I'm basically not going to die and I'm not going to be CC'd. So it's, an, it's a go-to Hail Mary to prevent a wipe. And it has done amazing, amazing things for me. It's hard to pull off, but in, the, in a pinch, 200 ultimate, and you can do some ridiculous stuff here with Magma Shell. I like this morph because uh, the nearby alloys gain a massive damage shield. Okay, so uh, champion points, and I probably don't have that effective champion points in the red. I know you don't want to hear that in a build video, but now this has worked for me. Um, I just will respect this in certain boss fights that I'm getting my butt kicked, but usually that's never the case. The only hard uh, fight you'll have is that uh, Sanctum first boss, the Mana Cora, because it does so much physical damage. Now, if you see this, this is not a percentage based. It's more of a flat value. So you put you know 20 points into this, you're getting... 1k resistance i don't think it's worth it anymore so i make sure i stick over here in harding element defender now you can do some interesting gear changes and go with the lunar bastion and more focus on your igneous shield and create a really cool tank doing that so that's a really good idea over here i do a 50 50 split on stamina magic cost reduction because i'm using both quite frequently um, and then i go over here and just do all magic regen because it doesn't really matter that i'm generating stamina remember this is for pve Player versus environment, killing stuff. My groups are going to have Templars running Spear Shards and Repentance, and I'm not getting stamina back when I'm blocking, so I, I think it's a non-issue to put it in Mooncalf. Uh, moving over here, if you're really having trouble with reduced block cost, you can put it this way, but the 50-50 split in the other, uh, other tree is really useful. I have every single part of my gear is legendary sturdy. 4%, 4%, 4%, 4%, I mean, 4 times 7. Do the math, it's a lot. I don't know, what's that number? I can't math, kids. Um, over here, now, this is obviously not what you want to do for an off tank, but if you're like looking at just surviving, this can affect Vigor. This can affect Vigor's healing, uh, excuse me, other healing that Dragonites do as well. So it's just a cheesy, lazy split. But really, you want to set it up based on Stam, your Stam DPS, or your Magic DPS over here too. Because this isn't necessarily going to save your life, more so being an effective off tank that can DPS as well. Okay, so let's go round up some critters here and kind of show you what I'm going to do. So the pre-buff phase, uh, I'm just going to get my shield up. I'm going to put my shuffle on, so I'm going to get my 20% dodge chance. I'm going to buff up with my armor. I'm going to bar swap and then hit absorb magicka. So you can do it in whatever way you want. Igneous, shuffle... And you see my resources are very, very juicy with this build. And that's an all heavy armor. So usually if it's a boss, I will obviously do an inner fire. If it's not, I will do a chains and a bang. So chains, light attack and a bang. Now you still need to be light attacking even though you're a tank while you're chaining them in. So now it's priority mode. I got three mobs, so I'm going to apply my major maim debuff. 
right there to all of them. You can see my character isn't little uh, ghostly looking, so I need to get Shuffle back on. I don't have spikes on my back, need to have spikes on my back. Major Maim is down on these guys, need to reapply it. My taunts down, need to reapply it to each of them. I'm running out of stamina, pop a potion. So I'm gonna go back to my back bar and it's priority mode. So I'm gonna do this, a little self healing, a little self healing, and build an up some ultimate. When in doubt, Warhorn, boom, almost a full flood of resources, and then just go back into priority mode. Let's kill him. My tank deeps is off the chains. I actually can do decent DPS just spamming Heroic Slash. So, let's just recap what we're doing. The pre-buff phase, you need to be buffing. This is not priority number one. This is what generates your ultimate. This is what will save your life a lot of times, and it's your stamina. Shuffle. So 23 seconds. This is gonna have to be cast more frequently, 20 seconds in a cost of magic. If you're gonna run out of stamina, you're dead. If you're gonna run out of magic, you're not. So when in doubt, if your stamina is low, spam igneous shields, that earth and heart passive to give you back stamina, but that's priority number one. Um, this, just having on your bar is, is very good, but if you notice a caster peppering you, this is what you're gonna do is casting it. And then you have your maims right here. So you have your, your AOE maim, or debuff, reducing their damage, and you have your single target for like a boss. This will also generate ultimate up, so you really want to use it. However, when in doubt, you need to be able to maintain shuffle over heroic slash, trust me. And then you have your taunt, ransack, single target taunt, uh, up close, and then enter rage uh, far away. So the priority here on ransack, if you're playing in a trials group, there's going to be other ways to get ma my major fracture. Specifically, Stamina Dragonites are probably going to be using Noxious Breath, which applies the exact same buff. So that debuff is not so important. The Minor Resolve giving you that 1300 physical resistance is really nice. Um, but when in doubt, the Radiate is very, very useful for the synergy potential and damage potential. So I almost prioritize my Taunting with Inner Rage over Ransack nowadays, which was never the case in the past. But as I understand more and more about the game and more and more about trials and so forth um yeah it's all about group play it really is and if you can do something to help your friend while helping you it's good for the goose it's good for the gander okay last video clip here let's show you how to manage resources i'm not gonna be able to kill stuff but i can last for a while so i'm here just in spindle clutch dinking around you can see i got a snare on me put my shuffle on and so let's see if we can't just tank a bunch of these mobs and just see how we manage resources. So the very first thing, I got a potion up. So usually my first uh, instinct is to always use a tripod first to get my resources back up. Maintaining my buffs here, give myself a little self heal. See, I'm, I'm rooted in place, so instead of a dodge roll, I'll just cast shuffle. My stamina is getting down a little bit, so I'll go a couple igneous shields. And then now it's time for ultimate. So if I hit magma shell, I know that I don't really have to block unless there's a heavy attack coming. So that gives me some time to get back a lot of stamina. So I'm going to get back my resources. I'm going to debuff a couple times, get Heroic Slash going to generate that ultimate. Make sure he loads back Igneous into a heal. So I got him again. Now I'm going to do some AoE damage debuff with Choking Talons. Igneous Shields here. Do a little light attack, get some resources back. And you can see how fast my ultimate's coming back. See? Heroic Slash and Igneous Shields. Now I don't have to block. I can use Igneous a couple times to get my stamina almost max, recast shuffle, and that's it. And guess what? Tripod's back up. So let's see if I can't get in more pressure. Let's go grab this guy. Oh no, I'm gonna die. All right, let's panic. I'm just kidding, tripod, here we go. I'm gonna do absorb magic, even though that's probably not gonna help us here. Igneous, Igneous shields. Give me that magic, give me that stam, here we go. Choking Talons in here. Now I got my big old nasty magma shell. Let's just see, tank and spank. Now I'm not holding block here. I want that resources to come back, ripping off a full heavy. Okay, now magma shell's coming down, so I'm gonna get all my buffs up. All my buffs. So now I'm really in trouble here. Something needs to die or I'm gonna die. 140 alts is what I'm at. I'm close. Eight seconds on a tripod. If we can last that long, we got this. Here we go. And come on, Spike Dimer, tripod. Ooh, tripod's up. Magma Shell's back up. Now unblock, reapply all your buffs. 
Okay, and this is how you tank basically a million things. Rotating between your ultimates. Now, I'm about low stam, so shut up, Deltia. Do the Zygnius weapons. And I'm already back at 130 ultimate. Low stam. Use my magic to basically get stamina back. And it... Boom. Got to back up. Drop block. I'm going to do a big old heavy to get stamina back. I got five more seconds left. Oop, better block. I'm in trouble. Dodge roll. Potion. Got ten seconds left on a potion. Come on. Come on. Here we go. Potion, four seconds. Don't die on a video. You can't. I'm spamming the button. Wrong button. But I'm spamming something. Okay. So, Igneous over and over and over. Spiked armor's down. Gonna reapply that. I'm low on Stam. And boom. That's back up. Choking Talons. And I can just do this all day, basically. Um, so, you can see, obviously, when you're solo tanking mobs like this, it's not gonna simulate... Uh, a boss but what it does do is gets you under pressure and allows you to figure out how are you going to manage resources independently of other players and this is how you can see how effective igneous shields is in transferring basically uh, magic into stamina igneous weapons hold down to heavy tripod I am at full resources so you can basically go full resources with this build, and that's the strength of it. It allows you to do group utility. It allows you to have absolutely freakishly amazing resource generation and not be dependent on someone else for stuff. So you're going to get a lot of friend requests if you pull this build off correctly. Okay, shut up. We're not done yet. 89, come on, 200%. Bang, magma shell. Stop holding block. Rip and grip. Smack him a couple times. Most important buff, I need to be gray. So I'm just going to spam Igneous. Look at that. Boom. I can basically out uh, Igneous the block costs. See that? Heroic Slash. And I did that because I knew a potion would be right back up. And I got five seconds left on Elude, so I'm going to make sure I cast that again. I know this is boring. Okay. So let's just start finishing these little tater tots. Come here, Archer. I'm tired of you. Now remember that Absorb Magic will not reflect them Archer Bolts. It's going to reflect magic specifically. So that's not that effective against those guys. Then I use my Taunt to reduce their armor. If I'm going to do damage and then Heroic Slash. Oop. Taking damage. So I'm going to hold block. Go back to Igneous Shield. I'm going to do it a couple times. That Decisive Trait will proc some extra ultimate. And hurt down a whole heavy. Taunt him. Debuff his armor. Rip down a whole heavy. Potions back up. Now I'm not going to do damage, but I can survive all day, every day. And why not? Warhorn for to go. Why dare you run over Saad Harim? Yayef is dead. No, this guy is tanky. Come on, die. Video's about done. Lord have mercy. So that's the T3 updated. Most of the stuff is the same. A few things have changed, making it super, super tanky. Uh, very effective in almost every single environment, specifically trials. Uh, I've been doing dungeons, but a lot more trials recently. And so I needed to find something that offered group utility to the max that had a lot of survivability and a lot of resources. And this is what I came up with. So hopefully that helps you on how to use it. Um, Stam Templar should be out tomorrow or today, so we're going to get to that, and then Stam DK, DPS, and a couple other things. Thanks for watching.